Can I get you anything? Water would be nice. Okay, so Ben, uh, the Enshrouded Devs, as you absolutely already know, have released a roadmap for 2024. And we knew updates were coming, but I don't know whether we expected this as a plan for the entire year. Yeah, I don't know if we were prepared for the, the sheer amount of content that's coming our way. Yeah. So yeah. one thing I will say real quick before we get into this stuff is that there is no no clear indication as to when any of this is coming out yeah other than know it's coming it's coming in 2024 that's all we know and there's a lot of stuff here so uh interesting but it all says 2024 so like i would imagine a lot of it's coming pretty soon right yeah you'd have to ass I, mean, I mean by definition all of this is coming their plan is to get all of this implemented in the next uh, what like 10 months yeah, which is wild, because I've kind of glossed over a bit of it. There's a lot um, of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff. Okay, let's dive into it. So Let's do it. First of all, we have the Hollow Halls Dungeons. See, this I find interesting, right? Because the Hollow Halls aren't anything that exists already, right? No, I don't think so. It's got to be like some kind of new... But dungeons, I don't remember the word dungeon really being used in Enshrouded. Yes, yeah. I think it's sort of paints a picture of like a, a bit more of an integrated dungeon crawler experience in terms of I don't, I don't know whether procedural generation would be a part of it but certainly having regular like ambient quests to go on and get certain loot and an experience yeah and i feel like the fact it could be coincidence but i feel like the fact that it's the first thing on the list implies that it might be coming pretty soon right I think it's a fair assumption to make that the the higher up on this list something is, the more they're trying to get a, a real grip on it. So Steam Deck support, performance improvements, I mean, general like quality of life stuff, I guess. I mean, personally, I can only speak for myself, but I have not experienced any performance issues. I don't think, I don't know whether you have. I've been completely fine on my PC. Smoother, high FPS gameplay. Can't complain about that. That's always a good improvement, absolutely. It certainly shows like a high um, aspiration from the devs, I think, in terms of making the game feel really smooth for less great systems and like the top end people that can play however they want to play. Okay, better stack splitting. Now, this is one that I've definitely complained about. Yeah, well, I remember. Yeah, so please just let us take one thing from a stack Mm -hmm. I don't want to be constantly splitting the stack because you have to, if you want just like one thing, you have to split. If it's like a big stack, you've got to split it like six times to get one yeah. thing out of it, right? Yeah. I think you want split half, split one, and then potentially, though this might be awkward on consoles in the future, uh, split and then you have a box that you can click on and type in a specific number. I think those three options cover all bases. Workshops craft from magic chests yeah so like with the npcs obviously you can use the magic chest but you can't at like the the forge and and stuff like yeah. that okay yeah so, that's definitely a, a helpful improvement improved loot ui yeah i don't think there's any issue with that i mean if they if they want to try some things and and see how it works out fantastic i have personally have not experienced any issue with with the actual loot box when you're trying to loot like an enemy or something location improvements again quite a broad thing what do yes. we think so there's one thing i'd say but i believe if i remember rightly it's mentioned later anyway but i'll mention it now anyway um you know naming locations i think is something we've both wanted naming your settlements um, mm. I think that adds a lot in terms of both role play and mechanic. Well, funny you should mention naming bases. We'll come back to that in a bit, Sean. Oh, you you hold your horses there, boy. Here's a good one: multiple NPC instances, so we can make multiple bases and actually bring the crafters with us. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. Being able to have in every base craft craftable NPCs, I think, is really important. Yeah, for sure. And especially like um, as you progress through the story, obviously, you're gonna make more than one base, right? Just and not not just in terms of like doing builds and stuff like that, but like in each biome, there's different things that you want to collect. So you might want to build a new base every time you get to a new biome, and then it's kind of annoying if you don't have the the crafters there to make the things that you need. So absolutely. 
Um, like, I get it, it kind of takes you out of the immersion a little bit if they exist in like multiple places, but I don't think anyone really cares about that. You just want the convenience of it. Absolutely. I'd agree. Reassignable glider shortcut. Yeah, this is this is an interesting one. So um, I, I don't know whether you've seen this. I know certainly in our main series we haven't uh, reached this point yet, but I saw a video of someone using what I assume is the top tier glider in the game. Um, it's fast and it's 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 really really quick and smooth, but the speed at which it moves, I don't know whether you'd want that all the time. Yeah. So I think what I assume this is meaning is you can swap between gliders a bit easier. I think that's a really nice idea. Okay, sitting on furniture. I mean, what what can you say about what needs to be said? Yeah, it's it's a really nice feature. We've been, it's surprising to me that it wasn't in the game on launch. So yeah, of course wild. it needs to be added. Yeah. Again, like you're naturally going to compare it to games like Valheim and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, like relatively uh, similar building mechanics, and it's kind of wild to me <laughs> especially with how good of a game it is like being an early access game too the fact that you can't sit on furniture is kind of weird but uh, we're getting it we're getting it so we i'm not going to playing anymore improved post processing i would imagine it's just making things look cleaner after all the graphic settings otherwise have been accounted for uh, new building materials, again, quite sort of ambiguous, but th it's just them adding more content into the game, right? And the, the building mechanics are so good in the game, why would they not want to expand on that? I absolutely don't think it's surprising that they want to focus on this. How can we give the players more options in terms of building and, and creating? And that will lead me on to something that I'll talk about a bit later. Oh, interesting. Mm. Oh, the cliffhanger, we like it. Oh, yes. Yeah, I think ultimately the, the crafting system will be their crowning achievement with this game. Potted plants, why not? Uh, any more creative uh, additions to the game that, that allow you to customize a little bit more um, building on, on, the, on the already fantastic, as you say, building system. For example, I recently put a build video out with like a a small balcony and like windowsills and things like that where you can't really like put any plants down but it'd be nice to have these just to kind of decorate your builds a bit more yeah yeah okay round doors and windows because because uh, people love making hobbit holes in this game right i've seen a few of them already uh, yeah i mean as soon as the game came out that was one of the first things that people recognized is that you can make some really really nice with the building system yeah. hobbit hobbit houses and I love this because this just tells me how much the devs do listen to people because they've obviously seen like, oh, loads of people are making Hobbit houses and stuff. Like, let's just put some round stuff in the game so that they can make them even better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it shows that un unlike, I would say, 90% of games developers nowadays, um, I think they're watching content. I think they're watching people play and enjoy the game and they're i think they're probably enjoying that a hell of a lot and i think they're using that information like you say to go what are people enjoying what do people want to do and how can we make this better for the people that are enjoying the game more trees to grow so we haven't really played around with planting trees yet have we i think uh, it, and i mean to be fair more trees to grow also implies more trees growing naturally more kinds of trees yeah possibly to be fair um, which will be interesting, that might change the landscape, that shows a potential for them. Uh, I don't know, they could they could vastly change the shape and design of the map going forward, potentially. They could add a redwood section with these huge hulking trees. Um, you know, and again, go, going back to like the bills and stuff, right? People could make some really sick tree houses and things like that. So, replayable world quests. If you look in the photo, it's like the, the NPC quest, essentially. Yes. So I think it'll be quests that you go to the blacksmith, the alchemist, etc., etc., and they will give you repetitive quests to, the, to similar sort of locations around the map. So say you clear out a Vukar settlement, uh, you might be able to then go back to the blacksmith and he will say, oh, no, the Vukar have retaken this settlement. We should probably go back there and, and mess them up again. I guess so, yeah. I don't really see the value of replaying those, personally. I don't know how much people would want to do that if it essentially just gives you the same rewards. 
I think it's just an XP thing in my eyes. Uh, better quest sorting. Um, I uh, again, I, I don't I don't yeah. know if that's particularly necessary personally. Yeah, I think that's fine. Server gameplay settings. I love this. A, giving the player a load of freedom and customization options, but for, for playing the game exactly the way you want to play it. So say, you know, you want to play a lot of building, then you would set resource respawn to maximum so that you can just continually get those logs, continually get that stone, and within seconds or minutes, you can just go back and get it again. You can make it as easy as you want it to be. You can just blitz through the game so that you've got everything if you do want to build. Equally, you can make it as hard as it could possibly be. You know, bump that um, enemy scaling to maximum and just have a really hard time playing the game because that's what some people want. Server user rights, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's just another one of those things that's sort of like, yeah, I think that's necessary. I don't think it'll necessarily affect me hugely. But uh, yeah, I think it's necessary for sure. Musical instruments. <laughs> Here we go, baby. Here we go. Now that is really exciting. Uh, the question is, what kind of instruments do we think they add? They've got to add like a lute or something, right? A lute, yeah, some kind of flute. Maybe it'll all rhyme with loot. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Uh, see, that just makes me think of like Sea of Thieves, right? When you go in on a long voyage and yep. you can't, nothing's really going on. There's no Krakens about, there's no Megalodons and everyone's just got their instruments. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's a worthy addition. It, it adds a bit of role play to the game potentially. Um, and it just makes the world feel fuller, I think, more than anything else. Yeah. Okay, editable signs. So this again is one that we've very recently talked about, right? Yes, we have indeed because it just makes sense like again i feel like most games like this have something like that in the game now you know putting up signs that n name your town um i think is really good for role playing and, and immersion. even even like with the town that we made in our playthrough like i kept forgetting where all the crafters were yeah um so just having like signs pointing to each of them would be really useful i love the fact that they've just used a chest in the wall for the photo in that yeah, I think that says a lot as well. I was going to touch on this. So I think that that to me says that they, as well as editable signs, they want editable names for chests. So you can go over to a chest and instead of it saying open chest, it says open resources chest or open gear chest. Um, and I think yeah. that's really good for people. Okay, vanity system. Again, it's quite vague, but I love the sound of it because... Um, one thing about me is that that is my favorite thing to do in these games aside from like building I just love character customization yes. um, and I feel like there is a decent amount again I think there's a lot of armor sets that we haven't discovered yet but yeah. if we can because we speculated before the game came out about being able to dye your armor and stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and obviously you can't but maybe with this update you can yeah I think I think as well as being able to die armor, I think that's definitely a big part of it. I think one thing I'd really like to see as well that might relate to this is being able to equip the look of armor that you want with the stats of other armor that you have so that you can have the best statted armor that you can find in the game, but also look exactly how you want to look. I think that's a, re a really important thing for people to enjoy yeah, the game. That's, people, that's a really good idea. Yeah, people get, uh, you know, attached to how they look. Like, I, I, even if, you know, me and you find better armor, if I find better mage armor than I've got currently in my main save, I'm still very, I really like the look of, of my character now, and I'd like to keep that yeah. going um, yeah. while also upgrading the quality of, of what I'm wearing. Yeah. Again, I think a lot of people that play this, it, there's like... It's 50-50, right? Some people don't care. They just want the best gear. They want to, like, get through the game, blah, blah, blah. But then, because these kind of games encourage creativity with building and stuff like that, that kind of extends to people wanting to customize their character and, like, have them exactly how they want them to look. This one's really interesting. Townsfolk NPCs. This, I think, is, uh, uh, you know, on the surface, you look at it and you go, oh, okay, sure, why not? But... If you dig a little deeper and you actually think about it, I think that the townsfolk could be the people to give you these replayable world quests, i.e. 
Oh no, uh, my jug has gone missing. I think it might be one of those dastardly scavengers. They're just in a base about 50 <laughs> yards north. You might want to go and have a look. Again, it's a really interesting one. And, you know, we could speculate about it all day, but like, do we think you rescue them in the same way you would the, the crafters? Like, are they going to be in the giant urns? Are they going to be, do they just appear at our base? Mm. Or are they found in like random locations and you invite them back? Like how how is yeah. it gonna do they just do they exist in the world or do they just show up in your base? Oh, I'm really excited again, speaking of things that I didn't expect to come into the game. I'm really excited about that. Speaking of more things that I didn't expect to come to the game, townsfolk pets. This is wild. <laughs> so um... we can tame animals. Right. I mean, this, uh, yeah, I mean, if it said townsfolk animals, I'd in sort fact, of like... In fact, let's, let's talk about these two together. Townsfolk pets and animal farming. Yes, this shows big aspirations, for sure. Even in games that don't have any kind of, like, breeding or, like, farming mechanics, I just love trying to herd animals back to my base and then trap them. Sounds yeah. really bad, but it's fun to do. You know, being able to herd a sheep or, you know, a pig back to your base and trap it and breed it and stuff like that, I think is a hugely immersive part of gaming and i think it absolutely makes sense for a game like enshrouded okay enemy patrols this one sounds really good because to me that is one thing that the world is kind of lacking once you've played the game for a certain amount of time you know where certain enemies are going to be yes um and you jet like when you're just roaming around you generally just have like wolves and kind of wild animals and stuff yeah you know say the game is coded to allow for a an, an enemy patrol through woodguard where our base is in our main series um it, you know they could they could be coded to walk up to it and if they detect you all of a sudden you've got to attack these enemies and get them away from your base I think they're leaning more towards the RPG side of things as opposed to survival. Yes, like, I think you're absolutely right. With like the vanity system, the instruments, mm. things like that. Like these aren't really things that you would need in a survival game. Yes. Yeah. But in an RPG, absolutely. Um, and I think that's fair. Like they don't want to like spread themselves too thin, right? They need to kind of figure out what they are, figure out what people enjoy the most about the games, which again, the building system and stuff right yeah weather system okay so i imagine we're gonna get rain snow maybe snow i think um and i think the snow thing sort of ties into the next thing we'll talk about um yeah. yes so i think a weather system is fantastic rain that could link into different f ways of gathering water um, and stuff like that, uh, you know, you could have potentially, uh, depending on how far they want to take it, you could have intense heat and therefore a heat system within the character. Are you hot? If so, you may start losing some stamina efficiency where you'd have to drink water to counteract that. Um, Again, it kind of lends itself to what we just talked about and how much do they want to lean into the survival aspect, right? Yeah, yeah. Nameable map locations, definitely something we've discussed. Yes, this is a uh, big, big thing. Um, you know, uh, I suppose we could talk about these two things together, to be fair. Ah, yes. Yeah, um, nameable bases. There we go. Yes, so these two things, I think, are something that, I, to be honest, I, I don't know whether you'd necessarily agree, though I think you might. These are two things more than anything else I'd like to see implemented sooner rather than later. Yes, absolutely. Because they seem like quite minor changes, but they would add so much. Yeah, yeah, I'd absolutely agree. You know, uh, making your own settlements, being able to specifically tag certain resources instead of uh, having to select from a vague and strange image system. Yeah, I hope they add more icons too. Yeah, more icons and the ability to to specifically name it, I think, are two things that, that I think we absolutely need. Especially if you've made like four or five different bases in the same world. Sometimes you kind of scroll over them and you go like, what, what was that? Yeah, yeah. Portals to other servers. Now, this is interesting. Depending on how they... I think this could be really good or really bad. Uh, I think if they do it in the right way, I think it will be fantastic. So... I don't know quite how this would work from a developer's perspective, but imagine... I think the way to do this right, and there would be issues 
you know, if you did it this way. Imagine if you and I were able to connect our worlds together and even if I'm offline, if you go to the portal in your world, you can access my world, do certain things to it, and then when I log on, it syncs me to you. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Okay, the mountains biome. So that's something, again, that we talked about. Um, I think we've obviously not completed the story fully, but we've experienced most, if not all, of the biomes at this point. I think we have experienced all the biomes, yeah. Um, and again, just from like looking over the ancient spire, we've kind of seen the mountains in the distance. And I think we speculated early on, like, oh, do we think we can go there yet? Or is that something they're going to implement later? So I guess we have the answer to that now. Mm, yes. The multiplayer pings. Even something as simple as, I'm going here, or look, there's an enemy here. Uh, I think will be, you know, yep. a really nice quality of life improvement for yeah, sure. Yeah, or even like, oh, where did you die? Yes, absolutely. And then to kind of link with that name, Tombstones, that's useful the amount of times we've died together and then we're coming back. I mean, like, generally my inventory was a lot more full than yours, so we kind of knew, but sometimes you kind of look at the two together and you're like, which is mine? So Yeah, you certainly want some specificity, even if it's just, um, you know, having your tombstones on the map in one color and allies tombstones in another color even that would do the job yeah uh, and again those two like the tombstones and the pings hopefully they come soon like with the nameable uh, map markers and bases new enemies and bosses of course um uh, is that a new enemy in the in the photo i've not seen that i don't think um I or mean, is that one of it, those like wraiths it looks like a wraith it certainly doesn't look like a normal wraith so i think that could potentially be a tease of a new kind of magic wielding enemy uh and then just fixes and polishing which you know i like could be anything yeah i mean i think that's just a general thing at the end to sort of let players know hey look we're gonna add all this stuff but we're gonna be working on the nitty-gritty as we go yeah um so that's all the main stuff in that section and then underneath we have here is a glimpse at some other major features coming later this year in our early access so again this would imply that these will be coming towards the end of the year maybe like winter kind of time yeah i think these are uh, larger concepts that they're sort of going we want to work on this over over a long period of time but don't worry they're on their way yeah, so we've got sharing and visiting of bases. Always good, you know, relates somewhat to the portals to other servers. Uh, create and share gameplay experiences, I guess that kind of ties in with it. Yeah, I think that's somewhat to do with that. And then, I don't know, potentially some in-game gameplay recording feature? I don't know. Uh, world events? That's really interesting. Again, that could mean a lot of things. Mm. Again, I think for me that I, the the best sort of focal point I can relate that to is Ark. So I, I know you've not played a lot of Ark, but there's Christmas events um, where the dinosaurs in Ark will be a certain color. You know, whether it's seasonal I... events for us where we're going through Christmas and Easter and Halloween, or whether it's oh my god, this brand new demon is attacking this place. All of you can go and fight it now. Yeah, I think that's more likely. I don't necessarily think that refers to, like, seasonal things. Yeah. Instanced dungeons. What are they called? Hollow, the hollow halls. Do we think that would be, like, potentially the first one? I suppose, yeah. Yeah, that would make sense to me. It is sort of the promise of we've got more a more thorough dungeon system that is replayable and, um, like, I say, like I said earlier, poten uh, potentially procedurally generated uh, so that you I can have more variation that. yeah i think yeah. that's a good idea even if there's a loading screen to get into it i don't mind that um well i think there will be with it being instanced yeah 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 um but even like they obviously have you know the ancient spires in the games with like the puzzle systems and things like that um so expanding on that and making like these these bigger scale dungeons with like more intricate puzzles and things i think that'd be really interesting yeah for sure more biomes obviously like the mountains things like that can you um, think of which, any others yeah. uh well i was just gonna say this implies that the mountains might be coming pretty soon then because the fact that those are two separate like yeah. points on the roadmap yeah any others um i mean there's a bunch you could do you could do like a, a swamp Swamp, I mentioned earlier, the Redwoods, potentially. The Redwoods, jungle. yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, jungle Swamp, I guess you could kind of merge Mix them those. 
Yeah. yeah. Ocean or lake? Uh, well, well, that would make sense. Let's come to the final uh, talking point here. Water. Now, this is a big deal and something that we've... Um, we've definitely wanted since more or less i think you mentioned this as soon as we really got into the game absolutely yeah well it's one of the first things that you notice more so than even like the lack of like rain and stuff like that just the fact that there are no like ponds or rivers or lakes it's just yeah yeah it's weird for a game like this not to have that and i'm interested as to the reason why that was the case so this brings to uh, onto a little point that i'd like to just briefly talk about so um from the sounds of things, you've not had this similar thought, but um, for me personally, I've actually accepted within my head just naturally a law reason. The Deadly Shroud is always in the lowest um, point in the map, right? It's in like little gorges and stuff like that. My assumption law-wise was that wherever the Red Shroud is, um, that's where the water was and, uh, you know, diseases and and stuff like that would spread much quicker through water than they would through air uh so my assumption in terms of the law was always that the rivers dried up because they were so infested with this really intense bacteria that is the shroud i mean that honestly is a really good point to be fair yeah that's uh, like i say i i just always assumed that naturally i didn't i wasn't even aware yeah. that my brain went that way i think just the fact that i mean to be fair we have glossed over a lot of the law books in the game but like I don't remember seeing anything referring to that. Um, and I feel like maybe that's been done by the devs by design. They'd probably imagine that people like you would assume that about the lack of water, right? But also yeah. they may have been planning to implement it in the future, so they don't want to explicitly say that in the game if they do decide to add it. Yeah, I think the fact that they've not mentioned it at all potentially adds yeah. credence to that, yeah. But the fact that like you, you still have wells and that is like the one source of water in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, we're finally getting water. I think that's a big deal. Yeah, I think, you know, both gameplay wise, roleplay wise, world building wise, um, I think that's a fantastic idea. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the, uh, the early access roadmap for 2024. So a lot of stuff to unpack there for sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. We've, you know, obviously we've like briefly touched on a rough order of how we think they're going to introduce these things to the game? I think you hit the nail on the head. I think the the things that are higher up in this list, I think, are potentially more of a priority to them. See, I thought that to begin with, with the hollow halls, but then again, like, the new enemies and bosses is right at the bottom. Um, yeah. And that would make sense to go. And then when you look at, like, you know, the, like the NPC stuff, and then the townsfolks all the way down there, and it, I don't know, you know, the more I look at it, the, the it could come out in any kind of order. And that's sort of exciting, to be fair. We don't know what we're going to get, and we don't know when we're going to get it. All we know is uh, the devs are hoping to get all of this implemented to at least to some extent within 2024, within the, the next, you know, um, sort of nine-ish months. This is a big, a big plan. And it feels like they've come out with all this information pretty early on, because the game's only been out for just over a month. Not a long time at all, yeah. Um, yeah, I th I'd probably say just over a month. Yeah, so i say it's come at the perfect time, to be fair, to the point where, like, pe most people have, like, finished the story now or, like, mostly finished it and they've played around with the building enough and they're like, okay, cool, maybe start moving on to other games and then, boom, suddenly they drop all this. Yeah, I think they've timed it perfectly. All right, I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up from us. Anything more to say, Sean? And not at all. Um, I mean, uh, we'll have another video coming out potentially soon uh, that will delve into maybe some other things that we'll, uh, that we'd like to see in the game. Um, but until then, uh, let us know what you think. We've got some. Uh, we've got plenty of build videos of our own coming out over the next few weeks. Uh, the series is pretty much done for now. We think, don't we? Yeah. I mean, I uh, as far. As Tell we've done the main boss. I think we may have a little bonus episode uh, fighting another boss that I've heard about, but we do not know where it is. Um, but we've got all sorts of ideas that are coming out, you know, in the next few weeks. So definitely keep an eye out. Okay, sweet. Well, enjoy yourselves, and we'll see you next time.